in a hundred years since it was dedicated, the Lincoln Memorial has achieved this extraordinary uh, uh, dimension in the in the United States and around the world. Particularly here in America, the Lincoln Memorial has become a shrine of devotion. People go to the um, Lincoln Memorial, they pilgrimage to the Lincoln Memorial um, to petition, to pray in a sense. If you think of praying as an act of asking for um, and that started probably back in the Easter Sunday, 1939, when, uh, when Marion Anderson sung on the footsteps for the first time, inaugurating uh, this, this, this idea that that is the place where, where this, their social changes take place. It was the same uh, the same um, uh, place from where the uh, Martin Luther King gave his famous I have a dream speech. But then uh, the feminists gathered, anti-war demonstrators gathered, um, LGBTQ most recently, and um, you know any social group that wasn't up to. Um, uh, take by storm the capital like last January 6th uh, when they did it peacefully and and with the nation first in mind they will go to this extraordinary temple of democracy which is the Lincoln Memorial um, but the question is who built it whose idea was it uh, and how not and, and how did it became what it is today? But but most than anything, uh, or before all, who made it possible? Who's the architect and the sculptor, the architect behind the temple itself, and the sculptor behind the um, sitting figure of Abraham Lincoln? which looks like Solomon sitting there, like ready to get up and take the reins of this country um, and, and, and bring it forward um, and refound it if, 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 if possible. Um, but we always talk about father founders, but in a sense, I always think of Lincoln as, as the refounder and it's, it's fair to think of it as a founder as well. He refounded it. He founded it with a different, different uh, um, uh, prerogatives in mind. The country had changed drastically since since the early days of the revolution. And um, but, but who who interpreted that figure as a Solomonic figure, as a figure of justice, as a figure of a fatherly figure? Uh, well, that was that was Daniel Chester French. And he did it right here in the Berkshires. This is where, where he conceived the maquette and the designs and the and the original blaster and and it was out of here that it was from here that he sent the marble to be uh, to be carved by uh, the Italian uh, Pizzarelli brothers uh, in the Bronx. I think it was the Bronx. Yes, I'm mostly sure it was the Bronx. But the creation, the actually, uh, the actually creature, uh, came out of of here uh, in a place called Chesterwood, and that's where we we've been hanging out lately.